Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose statement remains the same. To bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. And so we are on part two of um, the study. Last week we did part one. We were talking about spiritual versus religious. Last week we cover um, relig um, spiritual. This week we are going into religious. And uh, for this portion... You can look at Acts chapter 17, Acts chapter 17, and you will see right from verses 22 to 25. That's what we're going to focus on. And so we're talking about what it means now to be a religious person. When you think about a religious person, many times you're thinking about <clears throat> someone that has an affiliation with church at least that what many of us think about when we think about someone that you classify as religious but a religious person is essentially one that has a strong belief in God or gods a religious person is one that has a strong belief in God or gods sometime they may not even ascribe to a religion they may be religious, but they may be believing in the stars and whatever else they want to believe in. And they are very involved in that. And so, a religious person, most often times, they belong to an organized group, an organized body that's classified as a religion. Why? Because it has a set of organized beliefs, practices, and systems. For example, you may have the Christian religion, you may have the Muslim religion, you may have um, Judaism, you may have Hinduism, you may have Rastafarianism, and other religions. If you look at these religions, you'll see that they have a set of belief. They have a practice that most of them adhere to and they have a system set in place. And so most often time, if you belong to the Christian faith, if you move from one location to the other location and you find a church, you'll find most churches have certain things in common. I dare say not every church, though they may be religious and declare themselves a religion, mean that they are ascribing to the true and living God. Because they can be religious, they may be in a religion, but everything that they're doing in their practice and belief may be so far apart. But I tell you this, in Christendom, or in most organized religion, what they have in common is universal, is that they like to gather together. They like to gather together. And usually when they gather together, you have someone that is giving a speech or proclaiming a word. And so when you look at it, that's a similarity. They're organized and there is a system in place. Now, once again, not because someone claimed that they are religious and they may belong in they may belong to a religion it means that they are following the true and living god because the religion that they may be involved with may be just following a supernatural being for example you may find some people believe in the ancient spirituality and other stuff and yes they may call themselves um, a religious group and they will have everything outlined. They may have their bylaws. They may have, a, they may have books that they read from. They may have certain rituals that they perform. Because they're organized. They may dress a certain way. They may speak a certain language. And guess what? Yeah, they are a religion. They are a religion. And those people are religious. So I say again... Not every religious person or religion are ascribing to the true and living God. If you recall the scripture that we spoke about, Acts chapter 17, look at verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Herbicus 
and said, Man of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. Watch verse 23. For I was passing through and considering, meaning he was looking at objects. He said, I was considering the objects of your worship, and I find even an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. So what do we have here? We saw that the people were very religious. We saw that they were gathering in one place. You see where Paul stood up, Paul stood up in the midst of the Areopagus. What was that? That was a place where they gathered to worship the good God, the Greek God, Ares. Greek God of thunder, the Greek God of war, Ares. So the place was called the Areopagus, meaning that's where those followers gathered. So Paul stand up in the midst of these people who have obviously they were recognizing Ares as a god. Now they were not worshiping the true and living God. But it was a place of worship. That's where they, they proclaim and that's where they say, okay, the god of thunder and the god of war, that's who we are gathering here to worship. Now, what do we see here? We see that they even, uh, they, there was even an altar with an inscription saying to the unknown God. To the unknown God. They were fearful of offending gods who they claim they may not even know about. So they, out of respect, set up an altar said to the unknown God. Hey, unknown God, we don't know you, but we don't want you to do anything to us. Just, just, just this is here for respect. Don't do anything to us, unknown God. Don't do it, because there is an altar. So Paul proclaimed that, I see that, I perceive that. In all things you are very religious. So you can be a religious person, but it does not mean that you ascribe to Christianity. You may be a religious person, and your form of Christianity is different from other forms of Christianity. Yes, and then preacher, is it wrong for us to have a religion? No, we'll go into that. So, I want to get at something to you right now. Man created religion. Why do I say that? Because if God was the one who created religion, if God was the one, I'll show you this, God did not call us to be religious, God called us to be holy and righteous. So that's the reason a man can just get up every day, every day a man just create a religion. A man create a religion in his backyard, a man create this particular religion, a man create a religion, worshiping a stone, etc., etc. Man create religion and henceforth becomes religious. Man create religion and henceforth become religious. Why are they religious? Because the religion that they created, it has a certain set of rules, it has a certain set of practices, and it has a certain system in place that to them is the norm. Anything outside of what they believe, what they practice, or what they organize, it's abnormal to them. Right? So I say once again, man created religion and henceforth become religious. And that's the reason today you have many different religions. Some suggesting that there are different ways to God, to the true and living God, or that the true and living God is not even the right way. There is a God over there. That's the one that you should worship. That's what happens when you become religious. Because a religious person may believe as a matter of fact, I have a strong belief in gods or gods, or they may ascribe to a certain religion. Now, God does not place a religious person above someone that truly worships him. Because God did not call man to be religious. God did not call man to subscribe to a religion. God called each and every one of us first to righteousness. God called us to righteousness. God did not say, I want you to be religious. Yes, and where is it saying that God calls us to be righteous? God did not call us into a religion. Because today, someone get up, they didn't like, like what you say, they just flip the script. 
and say, okay, this is our new religion. This is what we're going to do right now. Now, I want you to look very closely at this. It says right here in, in verse uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse, verse 11, it says, But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness. It also says godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness, fruits of the spirit. But it says, you, O oh man, pursue righteousness. God wants us to pursue righteousness and not to pursue a religion. God does not place a, right, a religious person over someone that is righteous. Because when you are righteous, when one is righteous, one is essentially portraying one of the chief attributes of God. And so in the eyes of God, because of the conduct that you display, because of the moral, because of the ethics that you have, because of the value that you place on God, then guess what? You are made right. You are made right. So a follower of God must therefore be righteous. I would say if you are to be anything, be righteous and do not be religious. Does it mean you can no longer be a Christian? No, 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 no. You can be. But do not follow after a religion, follow after righteousness. Because God loves someone who is righteous. God always speak about someone who is righteous. Look in the book of Job, Job chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless, meaning he was righteous. When you are righteous in the sight of God, you are blameless. And when you are blameless, meaning you're righteous, guess what you do? You shun evil it says job shunned evil but most importantly he feared god so the person that is righteous the person that is righteous that person fears god first and that person shuns evil a person that is religious may not even fear god they may even dear god because they are governed or they ascribe to their religion and, and their religious beliefs supersede everything. So to be religious, to be religious or for you to say you're just, you're just an hardened follower of this particular religion, religion and there is no Christ in it. There's no Jesus Christ in it. There's no fellowship with Jesus in it. Guess what? It is detrimental to your salvation. What do I mean? It means all you're practicing, all you're doing, all you're saying, everything that you're chasing after may just cause you to lose your salvation, may just cause you to end up in hell. And many people are in danger of this. Because oftentimes, oftentimes, when we are religious, oftentimes when we are religious, guess what we do? We like to point fingers at others to show their faults, to show their faults first, not recognizing our faults. When we are religious, we, we, we hold people to a certain standard, not saying they can make a mistake. And guess what that is? That is hypocrisy. That is hypocrisy. And Jesus Christ spoke about those things. The religious person, most times, they are hypocrites. And guess what? They are also show off. They like to show that they know. They like to pretend like, oh, it cannot happen to me. I am better than you. I am this. I am that. I am that. And Jesus Christ had to rebuke a set of religious people. Look at Luke. Look at the passage of scripture in Luke, in Luke chapter 11. First, look at verse 37. From verse 37 to 53, you will see where this encounter occur. Verse 37, and he spoke to a certain Pharisee. He spoke to a certain Pharisee, all right? Move over now to verse 42. Now, Jesus is rebuking the Pharisee. Jesus said in verse 42, But you, but woe to you Pharisees, woe to you, for you tithe mint and ruin all manner of herbs and pass by the justice and love of God. All right. First, you must understand that a Pharisee, a Pharisee is a religious person. There, this person was, was, in, was a, in, in, a member of the ancient Jewish sect. They were Pharisees. The Pharisees, the Pharisees, guess what? They had a whole lot of authority. And they roll hand in hand with who they call the scribe back in those days. Verse 44, woe to you scribe and Pharisees, seize 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Jesus called the scribes and Pharisees hypocrites. They were religious people. Now, a scribe was a person that studied the law intensely. They interpret the law, meaning they studied the word of God. We're talking about Moses' law. We're talking about the Torah. They, they study night and day. They study night and day. So they were part of the ruling, the ruling body. They were religious peaceful. But guess what? They were not doing things according to the standards set by God. They were doing things according to tradition. And so Jesus had to rebuke them. I'll show you later what they were doing. But Jesus had to rebuke them. So I'm saying to you, usually, usually you'll find religious people that are very self-righteous. Religious people that think that they are the only one that knows everything. And that nobody else knows everything. And that they are the one who are, they are, the one who are always pointing out your faults. They never look at their faults and they can never be wrong. They always point your faults out and say, hey, wait a minute, look at me, look at this, look at that. Because they're hypocritical. They're hypocritical. They like to point the fingers. And they like to, to, to be seen. And so Jesus had a hard time with religious people. As a matter of fact, religious people were rebuked. If you look in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21, Jesus says, Not everyone who said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And you read verse 22 and go down to verse 23 and says, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Though they were scribes, though they were Pharisees, though they know the word, though they were studying, Though they, 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 they did all manner of things to keep the religion alive, which was Judaism. Guess what? They're getting a strong rebuke right here. Not everyone who said to me, Lord, 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 Lord. Today we see the same things happening. We see people practicing witchcraft. We see people, practice, people declare that they are Wiccans. We see people practicing every other religion, worshiping ancient deities, etc. We see even people ascribing to astrology. And yes, they classify that as religion. And so they, in this country, they have a, a right to, to worship and they have a right to gather and they have a right to do everything. And so religion is a very serious thing. But I tell you this. You'll find out that many religious people, many religious people proclaim they have the right to believe in whoever they want to believe in, to do whatever they want to do, and to set their own system in place. That's what they do. Of course, they have a free will. But we know that they will also be rebuked. Now, an example is in the same passage of scripture in Acts chapter 17, and you look at verse 22 to 23. This is Paul again. Paul stood up in the midst of them and said, Men of Atom, I perceive then you are all, all, in all things you are very religious. Then Paul said, I was passing through and see the objects of your worship. I even found an inscription to the unknown God. They didn't know this unknown God, but yet still they believe in it. They didn't know this unknown God, but yet still they say, oh, wow, we have to, yes, yes. We see the same thing happening today. Religious people will oftentimes want to disagree with you. They don't think what you're doing is right. Because they know the scriptures, and because they are the author of everything, and because they are the only one that they proclaim is receiving any instruction from God. And so they will disagree with you and they most time will accuse you if you're not in agreement with them. No matter how small it is, they'll accuse you saying, oh, you do this, you did that, I don't agree with this, you are this, you are that, how can you be in church, how can you be this and you're doing this. Always pointing fingers, always looking for the right time to strike. Because they're always watching every move you make, you put one foot above the first one. You climb up the ladder. You did this. You should have sit down. You should have done this. You should have done that. An example is in Acts chapter, Acts chapter 25. And this is another encounter with Paul. It says, verse 18, When the accusers stood up, 
They bought no accu they bought they bought no accusation against him of such things as I suppose. But some but had some question against him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus. They can't find anything wrong. But yet they're gonna accuse him. And they're going to ask him certain questions. They, they, they like to accuse. Once you do not agree with them, once you decide that I'm going to follow this and I'm going to do this, they, if they don't agree with you, oh, you're going to hell. Who are you? What are you doing here? You, you, you're going to hell. Many religious people do that. Religious people also like to be very popular. They like to be seen. And they claim they know more than you. And they like to put forth their own interpretation of what the scripture say. Never mind that the scripture is saying, for God so loved the world. They will find something else and they'll give you their own interpretation and their own spin on what it is. That's what religious people should like to do. They love to be popular. Love to be seen. They are the ones that want to occupy the favorite seats in the church. They are the ones sometimes that sing the loudest, do the most things, drop the biggest check in the offering plate for everyone to see. Jesus again had a problem with religious people. Matthew chapter 23 again. Verse um, 1, then Jesus spoke to the multitude and to the disciples saying, look at verse 2. The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' chair. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not according to their work, for they say and do not. They like to have their own interpretation of scripture. They like to tell you the do's and the don'ts and the do that. You see, these people believe that there is somebody. These people believe that they were doing the work of God. They were interpreting Moses' law. They had the right to, they had the right to, to, to call you or to point you out. You're breaking this law. You're doing this. You're doing that. That's what they do. You walk down the street and the, what they proclaim as a Sabbath day, you have something, then you're in trouble. Then you're in trouble. As a matter of fact, they even persecuted Jesus. As, oh, you heal someone on the Sabbath. Who are you? You can't do that. When Jesus was, was, was ministering and, and, and speaking to sinners, oh, you are a friend of sinners. How can you say that? How can you say that you, you are from God, you are the son of God, and you are the friend of, scissors, of sinners? You are supposed to be. How can you introduce them to the kingdom of God if because of your religious behavior you are blocking them? Because you know that someone is involved or was involved in this you block them many religious people don't want anyone else to go to heaven they have the keys for heaven they're not going to tell you and unfortunately we were given the keys we were given the keys whatever you bind whatever you lose jesus said that he gave us the keys and so they remain selfish. They will never tell anyone about Jesus Christ. I want him to go to hell. Look at him every day. Look at what he's doing. Religious people like to do those things. The religious people like to gain new converts. And when they gain new converts, they like to enforce their own tradition and to justify how right they are. That's what religious people like to do. Oh, come to my church. Oh, your church isn't right. Come over to my church. You don't go to that church because they don't worship like that. Come and let me show you the right way. Matthew chapter 15. Look at verse 1. Then the scribes and Pharisees, the scribes and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem later came saying to Jesus, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? They want to keep you bound to tradition. Religious people like to do that. To keep you to tradition. To hold you to tradition. And then look at verse 3. And he answered to them. Why do you also, why do you also transgress the commandment of God? Because of your tradition. Religious people. 
Don't believe that they're doing anything against God when they're holding fast to tradition. They will hold fast to a church tradition than the tradition of God. Oh, I'm not doing that. What is in the Bible? I'm, I'm not doing that. And so they hold fast to tradition most time instead of holding fast to the word of God. And once they get you into their, gri their grasp, they justify things to keep you in line. They will tell you whatever they have to tell you to keep you in line. They will even bend the rules to keep you in line. If you look at verse 4, this was Jesus. For God command man saying, honor your father and your mother. And he who curses mother, father or mother, let him be put to death. But that was the word of God. But this is what the religious people twist it and say in verse 5. But you say, whoever say to his father or mother, whatever profit you may have perceived, received from me is a gift to God, then he need not to honor his mother or father. What is that saying? It is saying that right here, these religious people like to receive money. They like to receive gifts, right? The commandment said, honor your mother and your father. I mean, you burden with them. You burden with them in that situation, right? But these religious people are saying, as long as you declare, hey, what I should give to you, I'm going to give to God, even though it's a lie. I, I'm going to give to God. It's a lie because you're just giving it to the religious person. I'm going to give it to God. Then guess what? You are okay. You do not need to honor your mother and father. It's that the religious people is telling you that, no, 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 no. You don't need to read the Bible. You don't need to worry about that part of the Bible. That's old stuff. We don't need to do that now. Follow this tradition. Let's do it like this. And that's what the religious people like to do. You don't need to worry about giving them anything, man. You do not need to walk. When you come into church, if you see someone hungry outside on the street, you really know of them. You see they're hungry, they're destitute, they're poor. You do not need to give them any money because you're going to church and when you go to church, you have to give that offering because the church need a bigger basketball court. And so they will justify telling you that keep your money in your pocket. Don't give it to the poor and needy, essentially. Don't give it to anyone that is in need of anything. Always bring your money into church. And they'll enforce Malachi and you bring your tithe and offering into the storehouse. Don't give your children any money. Because you have to give it to church. The religious people will enforce those things on you and they will justify it. As a matter of fact, some religious people will quote scriptures to keep you in line. They will do that. So, having said all of that, the question you may be asking is that, is it wrong to be religious? Can we be part of a religion and not transgress God? You can be religious, and you can be in a religion, but if you are religious, and you are in a religion, guess what? That religion and your religious attitude must be unto Jesus Christ only. It cannot be unto anyone else. It cannot be due to tradition. It cannot be, oh, well, because my pastor says so. Whenever your pastor says something, look in the Bible. Look in the Bible. James chapter 1, verse 26, it says, If anyone among you thinks he is religious, but he is religious and does not bridle his tongue and deceives in own heart, this one religion is useless. Meaning, you think that you are religious. You think that you are in the right religion, but you like to gossip. You like to talk about people. You like to spread rumors, essentially. Then guess what? Your religion is worthless. But if you are really going to be religious, you must follow after Jesus Christ. That means if you're really religious, this is saying then you cannot go and gossip about people. You cannot go lying. You cannot go do this. You cannot do that because the tongue has gotten many people in trouble because they talk too much. They talk too much. And the talk that they talk, the talk that they're talking, guess what? 
it brings condemnation. It brings condemnation. So I'm saying to you, if you are going to be religious, if you're going to be involved in a religion, you must ascribe to Jesus Christ. You must be following the word of scripture. But I want to say this to you. You must be very careful in declaring yourself a religious person if you're going to do so. As a matter of fact, I would advise you to pursue righteousness and define yourself as a righteous person rather than a religious person. Because once again, not because you declare yourself to be a religious person, it means you are right with God. But when you are a righteous person, you are taking on or you're saying, I love the attributes of God. I am going to follow after God. And so guess what? You will be blameless in the sight of God, but you cannot do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. Because righteousness, righteousness is due to your affiliation with Christ. Righteousness is due to your affiliation with God. God called man to be righteous. Isaiah 42 and verse 6 it says, I the Lord have called you in righteousness. God called us into righteousness. God called us to be righteous. God never called us to be religious. God called us to be righteous. So even if you declare yourself going to church, tying up your hair, doing all those stuff, giving a lot of money in church, but everything that you're doing is going against God, you're twisting the word of God, then guess what? Your religion is worthless. God call us into righteousness. God want us to be righteous. God want us to be righteous because when you're righteous, you are right in the sight of God. God also call us to be holy. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Be holy for I am holy. So God called us into righteousness and God called us into holiness. God never called us into being religious. So if you're going to be a, a religious person, if you're going to be a part of a religion, you better make sure that that religion, and you better make sure that your defini their definition of being a religious person is in keeping with the scripture. You better make sure of that because too often religious people hold fast to tradition. They hold fast to a religious tradition. They hold fast to whatever their denomination has to say. They hold fast to that faith, that faith, that faith. Look at this. Look at this now. For example, Christianity. They classify Christianity as a religion because there are a certain set of rules, there are certain beliefs, etc., Right? And there are certain practices. But then, within Christianity, you have Catholicism. And uh, Catholicism, they declare that they believe in God. I'm not picking on Catholics, I'm just using this. They believe that they believe in God. But at the same time, their gateway to God is Mary, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Now, God has no mother. God has no father. So that right there is heresy. The scripture tells you also that we should not worship any graven images. But yet still, in Catholicism, you have all different images of angels, Mary, people crying, oh, the statue of Mary, cry, crying tears, crying blood. This saint, that saint, man declaring person to be saints and that, 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 that and all those things. And, and you got you to gotta go to confession and speak to this man in a little boot and that, that, that. No, you speak to God yourself. You speak to God yourself. So, though they classify themselves as Christian, their belief and practices are different. Then you have various other Christian groups you may have the Christian scientists who believe in aliens, etc. You may have, um, you may have uh, different, many different varieties. And that's one of the reasons I say we are in the amalgamated with Christ church. We are non-denominated. We ascribe to holiness and righteousness. We are going to speak, thus say the Lord. We are going to hold fast to the script. 
Because if you were really to read the Bible for yourself, you'll see that many religious people and religion, they're holding on to tradition instead of holding on to the word of God. And the only reason some people are still following after certain religion is because they have not read the Bible for themselves. Because many traditions, or many religions, I should say, in this world, if you were to look deep into it, you'll see that it's a whole bunch of junk and a whole bunch of nonsense. But people follow tradition because they grew up in that. They see their four parents doing that. It's, it's what they do in their country, and so we can't go against it. Even when things just just very weird, but we can't go against it. But woe to those of you who always follow or scribe to tradition and not the word of God. Jesus says in Mark chapter 7 verse 8, For laying aside the commandment of God, meaning you let go of the word of God and all to the tradition of men. Many people, instead of holding on to the word of God, they hold on to the tradition of man. You see today a whole lot of strange tradition popping up in churches all over the place. A whole lot of strange tradition taking place. Man going in churches, bowing down to preachers, kissing their shoes, doing all sorts of weird things. That's not in the scriptures. That's not in the scriptures. If the preacher don't tell you to do this, you don't do it. Some people, the preacher is going to tell you, don't eat and you don't eat. Don't sleep and you don't sleep. Don't this and don't that. Because you are following after the tradition of man instead of the, 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 the word of God. If you were to look into the scripture... And you see, the scripture is saying, for from within, for, we, for from within, out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, and murders. Some people now are going to say, you didn't taste the cookie, but you're just looking at it. When Jesus clarified things and make it a matter of the heart. But man is going to say, as long as you don't touch it, as long as you don't act on it, guess what? You are okay. And so many men go around looking, lusting, committing evil deeds, stealing, murdering, doing everything. They're not guilty in terms of physically doing it. But right within their heart, many of us are guilty. We murder people every day within our heart. We tell lies and people every day within our heart. Laying aside the scriptures and taking on the tradition of man. Because you're going to hear say, as long as you don't act on it, you are okay. And I say many today are holding on to church tradition and not to the teaching of Jesus Christ. A religious person, religious people oftentimes go astray. Oftentimes go astray and believe what they're doing is right. They oftentimes go astray and believe what they're doing is right. Because they have no roots. They have no God within them. They have no teaching in them. Many, many religious persons don't want to be taught. Because they heard this long ago and they're going to stick to it. You can't show them anything Look in the Bible. We don't want to hear anything because our preacher tells us this and our preacher tells us that. And so because of that, many religious people have gone astray. Because now the tradition is, they tell you you're coming to church. If you give $100, you're going to get $300. And so many times that's the tradition. It becomes a tradition. People don't give freely anymore to the work of God. People don't contribute freely anymore because now the tradition is if you put in, God is going to give you. They're using God as an investment scheme. Once you do this, God, has a, God must bless you. God is doing that. And so many religious people now, they want to hear what they want to hear. And so they will go astray when they hear the truth. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5 
Apostle Paul is speaking to Timothy, he says, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Many religious people declare that they love God, but they deny the power of God by their action, by their thoughts, by their deeds. They deny it. And so the Apostle Paul said, and from such people turn away. We shall not or we should not allow religious people to influence us. Do not allow influence religious people to influence you through their tradition or because they think such thing is right. All they will do is turn you away from God and cause you to have a form of godliness. The Apostle Paul says right here, Having a form of godliness but deny its power. Claiming you love Jesus but you're affirming everything because that's a tradition of the day. You're denying God. The apostle Paul says, and from such people turn away. You do not want to get in trouble. Turn away from religious people. It does not mean that you cannot know a religious person. It does not mean you cannot speak to a religious per a people. Um, you cannot speak to religious people. I should say. It simply means that you cannot allow religious people to influence you. Your influence must come from God. Your influence must come from the Holy Spirit. The job of the Holy Spirit is to remind you of the teaching of Christ. If you do not read the scriptures, if you do not pray, if you have no knowledge of what is written, for whatever things were written aforetime is for our learning, the scriptures say, then how do you expect to hear from the Holy Spirit? You may hear something, but because you're not reading, because you're not in tune, you do not know where it's coming from and so you will turn away so I say then you must hold fast to righteousness and holiness instead of holding fast to religion and to be a religious person because when you hold fast now to righteousness and holiness you realize that God is a spirit and they that worship him if you're going to worship him you must worship him in spirit and in truth you must worship God for who he is worship God according to his attributes true worship not religious or traditional behavior true worship you have traditions now where people go in and now with the order of the day, many people, many churches, they like to practice and they like to do praise dance. But it's the way they are dressing when they are doing that now. It's, 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 it's sometimes it's very outrageous. And that's what they do when everybody feels good about it. Because tradition, it, oh, yeah, well, they're doing it, it feels good. But if you speak about it, oh, you're just fighting against progress. No. We're just saying, the way some people are dressed in and carrying on, there's no modesty right there. And scripture wants us to be modest. So if you're going to hold fast to the scripture, there must be some modesty. There must be some modesty. It's okay, you know, I can go to church now. I can go to church as the pastor's wife or as the person that's going to do, do praise and worship. I can go wearing a tank top and a, a little jean shorts. And people think, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You should come as you are. Yeah, but you don't stay as you are. We no longer conform once we are changed. Because now you're ascribing to righteousness and holiness, not to tradition. Many people have no respect for the church and say so they go into the church any and any way, any and any way, say and do anything. But I guarantee you if they're going to court or if they're going to a job interview, they show the uttermost respect in the way they conduct themselves. Because now church tradition dictate that whatever or anything goes. You wake up in your pajamas and you just decide, I'm going to wear my pajama to church today and no one can stop you. Why don't you wear your pajama when you're going to court? Why don't you wear your pajama when you're going on the job? Why don't you do that? In a corporate setting. Or when you're going to meet someone who you believe is important. You know the reason for that? Because you're holding fast to tradition. You're holding fast to tradition which means you are a religious person. If you are religious and your religion is not, is not salvation through Jesus Christ. Then your religion is worthless. Because 
every religious person, if you're going to be religious or if you want to call yourself a religious person, your religion must be, or your religiosity must be keeping in keeping with the teaching of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, he's going to rebuke you. I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. You are practicing lawlessness if you're holding fast and you're practicing tradition. You're practicing lawlessness if you're holding fast and practicing tradition and not holding fast to the teaching of God. Oh no, no, no. You can only do you can only do communion once a year and only if the preacher is there. When the scripture says as often as. The scripture says as often as. But you nullify the word of God and you make someone feel guilty if they, if they do a little communion in their house between them and their family. You make them feel, how oh, dare you? Who are you to do such a thing? Make people feel guilty. Because traditionally, if the senior pastor isn't there, then it cannot be done. If someone comes in church and it's available and they ask a communion, oh no, 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 no. We only do this, we only do this, we only do this in Easter. No, 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 no. You are not practicing according to the scripture as often as. What you're doing is practicing tradition. You're holding fast to tradition. The holy, the holy scripture, the holy scripture, God himself, Christ himself never encourages us to be religious. Instead, 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 we must demonstrate righteousness and holiness because that's who we are and so one must be very careful if we declare that we are religious and we're following a religion you should make sure that everything is according to the scriptures everything according to the scriptures as james correctly put it that religion is worthless if they have no control over their tongue and so when you go into any environment and if you want to know or how do you know if the religion is true how do you know if it is true what they're saying after all Christianity is a religion whether you want to admit it or not because there are a set of rules there are a set of beliefs there are certain practices that we do that is different for example, what the Rastafarians may do. They may smoke. They will smoke marijuana. They may do that. So in other religions, they may jump and invoke spirits and do all those stuff. Um, the Muslims may do something different. The Hindus may do something different. So how do you know if your religion, the one of Christianity, is in keeping and it's true? Things must line up to scripture. The first thing you ought to do is listen very carefully to the one that is proclaiming the word. Something sounds strange to you? Look in the scripture. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit, whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. So you may have indeed within the Christian religion, Certain preachers proclaiming God, saying that they're this, saying that they're that, but at the same time, they're just following tradition. Because we see many of these so called false prophets raising up. I've seen some bathing the sisters in the church out of Africa. Right in the middle of the church, they have to give the sisters a bath. And people are sitting there looking and they're saying, oh, yes, it's okay. Yes, 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 yes. Test the spirit. Because you may just be religious. You may just be religious. Now, once again, how do you know? I said because everything that we do must line up with the word of God. The preacher cannot tell you, wake up tomorrow and say, you know what? I just really re received this new revelation. Don't believe that thing in the scripture anymore. Because what I'm telling you here. What I'm telling you is from God because I know I'm the one that has the doctorate. I'm the one that go to school. I'm the one that did this. I'm the one. The first, the first, the first thing right there is the I, the I, the I, the I, the I. And declaring that they know 
First Peter, chap, I mean, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Mm -mm. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? The scripture is not subjected to any private interpretation. The scripture came from men who God handpicked. Those men were the prophets of old and the apostles. There are no more prophets. There are more, no more ap uh, apostles anymore because they're not getting anything new. It's only one Bible. Only one Holy Scripture. So it's not, it's not subjected to any personal interpretation. Now, now, there you go. There you have it. Whatever they are saying must line up with Scripture. And they cannot come with anything new. Telling you that this is a new revelation. And once again, any religion... Or a religious person without God, without Jesus Christ at the center in terms of Christianity. Because that's what we're concerned with. As a matter of fact, any religion without Jesus Christ is worthless. And we say that without any apology. Any without Jesus Christ is worthless. And if you belong to Christianity. If you belong to Christianity. Listen very carefully. If anyone, James chapter 1, 26, if anyone among you think he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceive his own heart, this one religion is useless. Any religion, a religious person without the fear of God is a worthless situation. That's exactly what that is saying. So, when you are a religious person, it just means that you ascribe to a body or may even to yourself and that you, 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 have, you, you observe certain rules. If you are spiritual, it means that you just believe in a supernatural force, whatever thing you practice, because you're spiritual. You may believe in the wind, whatever you are doing. But I say to you today, my brothers and sisters, there is only one true religion. And that is of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And God himself never called you to be spiritual or religious. God called you unto righteousness and holiness. And that's it for the study. In Jesus' name, amen.